today we'll be installing UC CNC and C and C. You'll see. Hello fellow CNC nuts and welcome. Today I'll be loading the UC CNC software onto my laptop and connecting it to the new UC300 ETH 5LPT card I showed you last week when I connected it to Mac 3. So just a few words of warning. First of all, I don't cover how to set up the Ethernet connection to the card because I covered that in last week's video. I'm also not going to go into any depth on how to set up the software from the point of view of starting from scratch because I'm going to be importing the XML file I have currently on Mac 3. That will fill in all the spaces for me. So I won't be going through how to come up with the figures to put into uh, the UCCNC software. That's a subject for an entirely different video altogether and can be quite complex. I am, however, going to uh, load the software onto the laptop and also configure the pendant up so that I can make it work. Now, it won't work exactly the same as it did before in Mac 3, but I'll get it very close. Without further ado, let's install the software. So to make installing the UCNC software easier, I've put the UCNC software folder onto my desktop. Now the first directory you see here is says XP only, and inside it it's got .NET Framework version 2. If you are running Windows XP as I am, you need to install this for either the Mac 3 plugin or the UCNC software to work. Now I did this last week when I did the Mac 3 plugin, so I don't need to do that now. I'm going to double click on the setup and I'm going to come down here, accept the license, next next, 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 and install. Now this software will uh, install very quickly. And there it is, complete. So I'm going to go finish, and it will automatically start UCCNC. Now the first thing it's going to do is going to bring up a message saying it's an invalid license key or no valid license key was found. Uh, so it's running in demo mode at the moment. Now I'm just going to close that there down because I have a valid license key. So I'm just going to click on there, right click and go copy. Then I'll come down here to the start menu, go explore, look at the C drive, there's the UCNC directory, right click and go paste and it pastes that license key into there. Now when it installed the software it brought these two shortcuts to the desktop. One's called UCNC Plasma which I'm not interested in because I don't have a plasma machine. I'll use this one here, the UCNC. UCCNC. Now the first thing it's doing when I double click on there is it's now found my UC300 ETH 5LPT motion controller card and the license matches. So now it's doing a firmware update. It'll do a firmware update every time you switch between Mac 3 and UCCNC. And I suspect it may do a firmware update should you uh, upgrade the version of software you're running. I haven't tried that yet, so I don't know for sure. Basically, if it asks to do a firmware update, just let it do it. Right, we're now ready to configure. If we push the configuration button, you'll see here looking at the X, Y, Z and A axes, there is nothing assigned to them. There's no pin, directions, ports, anything of that nature. You can actually enter the appropriate information by simply clicking on the box and just entering the port number and then you have to hit the enter key. And hitting the enter key is very, very important because if you don't do that, it won't accept it and it'll just go back to zero. Let me show you. I'll go four and I'll move to the next box and it just goes back to what it was previously. So uh, that can be very frustrating. So for the enable pin, if I put six and then move to the next box without hitting the enter key, it just returns to the state it was previously. So 
if you find you're not being able to, it's not taking these entries, uh, just be careful, just check to make sure you're hitting the enter key. I'm not sure what happens if I put an invalid port in there. Uh, it does accept that. I'm going to apply the settings and go save settings. But if you're putting an invalid port in, as I did there, port 1 is not valid. It has to be port 2 or 3 on the card that I've got. Uh, when you go to save it, it disappears as well. Again, another frustration. But having now entered this information in here, the pin port, the port and the pins for my step and direction, I should now be able to jog my x-axis. And as you can hear there in the background, it's moving. And it's just using these settings that are currently on here. Now I can go through and configure up each of my x, y, uh, Z and A axes, and uh, then my machine will work properly. But there's an easier way. If you have been running a profile in Mac 3, simply come along here to Profiles, and click down here, Import Mac 3 XML File. And there's my XML file there from uh, my Mac 3 setup. I'll double click on that. It says that the uh, XML settings were loaded into the configuration. Uh, the apply and save buttons can be used to apply and save the imported values. So I'm just going to go apply those values and I'll save those settings as well. If I go back to the axis setup now, you'll see now, while these pins and ports are the same as I put in for my X before, uh, these values are certainly a lot different. And if I skip along to the, uh, the Y, Again, uh, different pins, ports, Th these were all zero before, uh, all the settings I have there, and it actually says down here to slave it with the A axis. Uh, again, the Z settings and the A axis settings. Next, we come along here to the IO, IO setup, and this is where we set up our emergency stop pin. And uh, that's set up, again, correctly. It's imported it from my Mac 3 settings and pin 15 on port 2 of the UC300 Ethernet controller. Now one thing you do need to also do is come into general settings and just uncheck enable soft limits. Now if you want to use soft limits that's fine but I suggest you first of all uh, just disable them until you know they're set up properly otherwise uh, the machine will sit, will uh, stop when you try doing anything, and it's really annoying. Uh, if you're like me and don't use soft limits, then uh, just turn it off. Uh, the other thing you need to do is come down here and put stop spindle and wait for cycle start. That's when it comes to a uh, when it comes to a tool change uh, M6 code. You can also set down here the kernel frequency, and I'll just leave that at uh, 100 kilohertz at this point in time. I'm going to apply those settings and I'll save the settings. So pushing the save button uh, saves it to my profile. By pushing the apply button it applies the settings that I've made here and but it doesn't save them. So uh, and until you hit that apply button you cannot use uh, the changes not actually made. So that's just something to be aware of. Next I want to come along here to IO trigger and we've got input trigger, output trigger, and the one I'm interested in is this one here, the hotkeys. Now the hotkeys, these ones here, you can see in this list here, and you can configure up, up to 48 of these, I believe it is. Um, you use these keys here, these are the key codes that define what key you're pushing, and these uh, are the functions that that particular key does. So if I go and push the set key there, it'll actually tell me that uh, code 148 is jogging in the positive uh, X direction. So that'll be the uh, arrow, this, this here will be the arrow key on my keypad or keyboard uh, that's uh, pointing to the right. So um, I'm going to go through and reconfigure all those to use with my pendant. Now to do that, it's quite simple. But it pays to do it in a methodical fashion. It's simply a matter of pushing the set key, and then we need to check the function we want to use. And in this case, I want to use the plus x key, so I'm going to just push that, and it comes up with a code there of 39.
go OK. Now that may have actually been the code it was before, and that's the plus, K code, uh, plus X code. Next I'm going to go to this one here, and I'm going to make this one here the minus X. So I'll push the minus X key on my pendant. You can see 38's come up, not 37, go OK. And there we are, minus X, 148, so I'm good on that one there. Now, I could actually go through and just set up the keys on my pendant down these two columns here, which have nothing in it, and then go back and uh, remove anything that uh, overlaps, but I have previously done that and found that everything overlaps with the exception of the A, the B, and the C. Uh, jogging, uh, which I have absolutely no interest in, so um, I've decided I'll just start off on the right-hand side here and work my way through. And that's the plus Z and the minus Z. So I'm just going to quickly work my way through these, and then we'll come back once I'm finished. So there we are, once I've finished, I've now got uh, a full column and three into the next column. So let's see now how well this pendant works. I'm going to start by jogging the machine, and we should see the X, the uh, Y, and the uh, Z move, which it does, and if I go to the origin point, they should all return to zero, which it has. Excellent. If I increase the feed rate here, we should see that go up and down, and likewise, we should see the spindle speed go up and down. That's good. Now, I'm going to push the cycle uh, stop key, the stop key here, and we should get a cycle stop come up, which we do. And I'll push the emergency reset button or the emergency stop button. And as we can see here, the reset button has come on and pushed again, it goes off. Uh, some of these other buttons I've programmed on here can't be tested until, so, uh, until it's actually running some soft, uh, some G-code. So down here, I've got a uh, jog rate. I've got me jog minus key and the jog plus. I haven't figured out how to make that uh, jump from 10 to 100% and back again with a single button press. Uh, maybe that's something I'll get figured out a bit later on. Uh, the next one is single step. Push the single step button on the pendant. It changes a single step. And uh, I, there's, I, there's no um, continuous step button on here, so I'm going to use the spindle on-off key. If I push that, it should go back to continuous step, which it does. So that's basically all the keys on the pendant that I can test, uh, and they're all working as I expect. One of the things I do find annoying about this software is, in actual fact, this Flyout MPG. In some respects, it's really good. Um, though, to be honest, it's probably not something I really want to look at too much. Uh, but if, you, if you're working down here and you flick your mouse just off a little bit too far, now it covers up what you're trying to see over here. And until you move your mouse right away from it, uh, you can't see what's there, and it's really annoying when you're trying to get into here and maybe just change what view you've got of of your drawing there, and you accidentally go a bit too close. So that's uh, a little bit of a nuisance. Now, one other thing is uh, the default for the MPG is a 10% feed rate here, and uh, so as you can hear. The machine moves reasonably slowly when jogging. But if you actually hold down the shift key while pushing the uh, arrow keys on your pendant, it will speed up to 100%. So at the moment, that's going to be my workaround for not being able to set that uh, jog rate higher. And who knows, I may actually get to like it. I, I don't know yet. Well, I hope you find that useful. And should you go out and get the UC CNC software as I have, and you already have a Mac 3 configuration file, you'll be able to now easily upload it into the uh, UC CNC software and be up and running really quickly. As far as configuring the pen go, as you can see, it's relatively easy to do. And what I'll do is I'll put a link in the description box below to where you can download a file that has in it the key on my pendant, what key code it is, 
and what function I allocated to it. Now you notice I didn't go in depth into uh, using the UCCNC software and uh, also what I thought of it because I haven't really used it. I've only had it for a week and uh, while I've cut a couple of projects on and they work perfectly fine, I haven't really gone much more into it than that. I think really it's a personal choice. Uh, Mac 3 and this one here are pretty much similar. If you're buying new and you brought a UC uh, type uh, motion controller then the UC CNC software is probably a great option. It's cheap, uh, certainly much cheaper than Mac 3 and one of the things to consider is the people who make the hardware also make the software. So the two shouldn't have any problem working together. Software like Mac 3 is developed by one person, your smooth stepper or your UC CNC motion controller are designed by somebody else and then they have to try and work together and they do do it very successfully but uh, maybe there's something in uh, having everything made by the one manufacturer. It's something to consider anyway. All that remains for me to do is to thank you for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys later. Cheers!